Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 16 Canary 2509 that I have here on my Pixel 8 Pro to show you all the new changes. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the update size and the build number. It's 618 megabytes and the build number is ZP11.250829.007. And now let's take a look at the new features. The first two changes are related to the lock screen. So when you go to the wallpaper and the style app and then go to the lock screen and then go to the clock, when you choose the default clock and then go to the lock screen, when you tap anywhere on the screen as you see the clock animates and it gives you a haptic feedback that matches the animation you see on the screen and this is only exclusive to the default clock design when you choose any other design you don't get the same animation the second change when you use the shapes effect under live effects and then tap on the lock screen as you see it gives you this really nice bouncy animation and it also gives you a haptic feedback and when you tap on it fast as you see it becomes bigger it gives you the same feeling as Android 16 Easter egg when you keep tapping on the Android 16 logo that's pretty much the same one but for the lock screen another change on the lock screen if you have the media controls and then press on the power button you will see a bigger movement in the clock and the media controls and for reference here is how it looks side by side with the previous version you see here that it moves more on android canary now this chapter is done but have you ever wondered how i keep track of all the new features and the changes i share with you the answer is simple i keep things as organized as possible i personally started to use a tool called the aki flow that made my life a lot easier Seriously, I didn't even know something like this existed. So here is how Akiflow helps me stay productive and organized. First, I go to my inbox and list all the tasks I want to achieve. This step alone free up my mind and help me keep track of my progress. Plus, under the profile menu, then integrations, I can connect my Google or Outlook calendars, in addition to 32 other services like Gmail, Outlook email, Notion, Slack, and many more, as shown now on the screen. By this, I have all my information consolidated into one place and instead of jumping back and forth between tools. I personally use Gmail and Google Calendar, so I connected them to Akiflow and by this, my calendar is on the right and the tasks I added earlier are on the left. Now I can use the time blocking technique by dragging and dropping the tasks to my calendar and assign a time block for each one. Additionally, when I check my emails and mark certain messages as important, they automatically appear in my tasks inbox, so I can also assign time blocks for them. Now I'm on top of everything and know exactly what I need to finish and when by just looking at one screen. Another cool feature in Akiflow is the AI chat. You can use it to edit or reschedule your tasks and calendar events, or automate certain actions like checking the weather or exchange rate and let the tool notify you when needed all by using natural language as if you are talking to ChatGPT. If you want to try Akiflow right now, use the link in the description or the pinned comment. And now let's get back to the video. There is also another minor tweak in the volume controls. And now you can see the live captions button over here. It has a square shape and when you tap on it, it turns into a circle. While previously to access the live captions, you need to expand the full panel. So now you have a quicker shortcut. The quick settings also got a couple of new changes. So let me show you a quick side by side comparison. On the left, I have Android Canary. And the first thing you will notice here is the smaller margin between the status bar and the quick setting styles after the first swipe. And the second change is related to the media controls. As you see here, I have two players activated, one for YouTube and one for YouTube Music. But on Android Canary, you can see a right and left arrows on the sides and the text in between is now smaller. 
While previously all we had is the pagination dots, but now we have two things, pagination dots and these two arrows that you can tap on also to switch between the two players. So these are all the new features I spotted in Android Canary 2509, but we also got the new features of QPR2 Beta 2 that I have a separate video talking about them, but I will quickly go through them here as well. But first, let me tell you, if you like any of the wallpapers you see in this video, they are now available in the wallpapers by in-depth tech reviews app that you will find its Google Play Store download link in the description. Plus, now you can download any of these wallpapers locally on device so you can apply the Android 16 effects on them. And now let's get back to the video. Starting with the first QPR2 change that we also got in the Canary cycle is the redesigned Google search widget on the home screen. Now it looks more colorful when you compare it to the stable version. But unfortunately, Android Canary doesn't force themed icons on unsupported apps like QPR2 does, and it looks exactly the same as the stable version. We also got the same live activities feature. So when you start the navigation in Google Maps and then close the picture in picture window, you will see a chip here at the top left corner. Tapping on it reveals the live activities banner, which is also accessible from the always on display display and lock screen. And the last QPR2 change we got is when you tap and hold on any of the notifications, you will see this new feedback button that doesn't do anything when you tap on it. When it comes to the changes under settings, we didn't get any of them, but Android Canary remains the same. And by this, we covered all the new features in 2509 Android Canary. Now let's end this video by talking about my experience with this build when it comes to the performance and the stability. I didn't spot any major bugs or issues. The phone was slow at first, but after a couple of hours, everything is back again to normal. The build doesn't have any major issues, but you will definitely see some glitches here and there. It lags slightly in some situations, but other than this, I think it's better than QPR2 Beta 2, which is giving me a very hard time on the Pixel 10. When it comes to the Geekbench scores, it's pretty much the same as the 25th of July on the same phone, the Pixel 8 Pro. I'm getting 3700 for the multi-core and 1600 for the single core, which is very close to the previous numbers. So that's pretty much it for today. These are all the new features in Android Canary 2509. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.